Hey Archery Talk, this is Lucas, and a couple years back, Garmin kind of took the archery industry by storm when it released the Zero A1 and A1i rangefinding bow sights. This realistically kind of gave us technology we had never seen before. It gave you the ability to range a target at full draw and providing a single LED light for, your, for an aiming point, meaning there was no more clutter of multiple pin setups in the scope, or even so much as like a regular single pin setup. It's just dead clear. It was a sight picture I really came to love. Um, and it was a wild new technology and, and you know, I, I shot this for a number of years. I shot it hog hunting in Texas. I shot, shot it deer hunting in Canada, uh, and really came to enjoy the site. Uh, and, but since its release, there's been a couple different competitors, um, from the likes of SureSight, a South African company or Burris. Um, and you know, those guys have their own take on how the range finding bow sites and how they work. Uh, and you know, the, the, the gap obviously closed up. Now Garmin, uh, sensing that, has decided to, uh, to change things up a little bit and they've released a brand new bow sight. Let's have a look at that right now. And here it is. This is the Garmin Zero A1i Pro. And as, as you can tell, it looks very similar. Here, I'll pick it up to the original A1i. But it has got some technology differences that really kind of set the Garmin now apart from everybody else. There is some wild technology in here. And some of it is really, in my mind, is kind of game-changing game tech. We're gonna to touch on that in a little while, but first though, I guess we should look at what's the same between these two sites. So if you're familiar at all with the original Zero A1 or A1i, uh, you're not gonna have a great deal of trouble operating this site. It is, uh, it works largely the same. You still have like the ranging button you put on the on the, op the front of the bow, kind of opposite the grip, and you kind of hold that at full draw to get your target, and you can either choose a single, um, a single ranged pin if you'd like. So, you know, if your target's 27 yards away, it'll put a pin, like an LED light, that will be your 27 yard marker, or you can choose the typical kind of multi pin setup. So it'll just give you, you know, dots at like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 yards, however however many you would like that you're able to range in the scope to. Um, so all of that really does work the same. Um, there are some differences though that we should dig into, some key differences that really kind of make a difference, I think, uh, to kind of bow hunters and anyone who's gonna kind of look in this direction for a bow sight. The most obvious visual difference anyway when you're looking at the new Zero A1i Pro are the mounting options. Uh, I've got the site set up on the Hoyt Carbon RX5 Ultra and this has got the Picatinny uh, rail set up over here. So this the site you can have as an option, you, set, you, set, you know, hook it up onto a Picatinny rail or there's even a dovetail mounting system and you'll see that in a picture of a, I'll attach here above. Um, and then that kind of, both these actually give the option of taking the site off. The original Garmin Zero A1 and A1i, um, they stick out a lot, and as does this one. So the, some bow cases, they just don't fit very well. Even soft bow cases, I find they kind of poke out a little bit, um, which was not ideal in that situation. Uh, they've solved that. The, the dovetail mount is you simply uh, un, unscrew a set screw a little bit, pull it off. You kind of unhook it up here, and you can kind of put this in a bag and stick it somewhere else in your bow case or in a backpack, wherever you're going to do. And if you got the um, the Picatinny system, well, it comes off just as easily. There's only one way to hook onto there, and it hooks on that way. So you're going to have the same aiming points every single time. It's a it's a welcome addition to the site because it makes it fit in your bag quite a bit easier. Another clearly obvious difference between this site and the old Zero uh, is micro adjustability. Um, like every other kind of bow site, there is a vertical and horizontal kind of change you can make there, and it's now micro clicks. Uh, there's 12 clicks per rotation, um, very small, minute changes. So even at 100 yards, you're looking one click is just going to make the smallest bit of a difference, which really helps you get dialed in. Uh, and unique to the zero sights are these, um, when you're setting up the site, there's a reticle that you have to get lined up. There's like a dot that you want to get lined up in a circle when you're at full draw. That's, that's, that serves a couple of different purposes. One, it makes sure you're, you're not torquing the grip or anything else when you're, when you're drawing the bow. Um, and so every time you come to draw, that, that dot should be inside that circle which is a little, a little lesson that you're, you're doing the right thing. Um, but you have to get that lined up. You've got these, they're calling them, Garmin's calling it like a RAH and RAV. So those are, they kind of move in on like a, on like a, on an angle side to side or up and down uh, to get that lined up properly for you. And when you're, when you come to draw, when you're initially setting this thing up, you're gonna see like a grid of arrows. And the arrows kind of tell you which way you have to move the site to get down to the, where the dot fits inside that little circle. Like a donut in the donut hole, I think we discussed from the first time we did this. It's a smart move and now it's micro adjustable. In the old setup, it was a little clunky because you, you had to loosen the screw and then hope you can slide it just a little bit at a time. And it was a little a little tough to set up. The new one is super easy. You just kind of loosen this, the, the, the uh, you know, the Allen key screw just a little tiny bit. And then you, you know, slowly rotate it left to right. There's not clicks because it's on a curve. It's a little complicated to kind of put proper clicks in there. It would probably add a lot more weight to the site. Uh, but you just 
you can still rotate it just uh, gradually left or right or up and down um, by rotating those dials and it just makes that whole process a little bit easier. So while that micro adjustability um, is obviously makes kind of getting that reticle alignment set up a little faster, there's other things Garmin has added this year to make the whole bow set up faster. And uh, one of those things is kind of getting your your kind of your pin stack set up quicker. Um, you can input actually your draw length um, and your arrow speed if you have a chronograph, if you know how fast your arrow is going, you can kind of put those in there or at least rough estimates. And it's going to automatically give you a pin stack. So you'll kind of get set up at 20 yards first, then you're going to get that information all dialed in there for you. And then you kind of go out and verify. So you verify 20 yards, make sure that's all sorted out. And then, then they want you to verify somewhere longer than 40 yards. So I usually go to 60. That's what I do when I'm working on a regular site, when I'm building my kind of site tape. Um, and same thing here. So I went up to 60 yards and it kind of gave me a 60 yard pin where it thought it should be. And it ended up being a few inches high, which is not a big deal. Cause you know, you have to, measurements are not always uh, perfect but at least it gets you close. And then after that, you take your shots and say, is it, it'll, t it'll ask you right on the site, hey, are you are you hitting the bullseye? No, are you hitting high or low? Say, oh, I'm hitting high. How high? Say, I'm hitting three inches high. So you mark that on there and then it's gonna readjust the pin stack. You shoot again at 60 yards and see if you're in the spot again. It'll again ask you if you're high or low. And if you're half an inch high this time, then you say half an inch high or half an inch low. And you do that until you get dialed in. And once you get that dialed in, at least for me, that was it. Um, once I had my 20 and my 60 dialed in, every other yardage I tried was bang on. So I shot this thing. My club goes out to basically 70 meters, so 76 yards in a little bit. Um, and so I shot this thing at 20 yards, 25 yards, 35 yards, out to 75 yards, basically. Uh, and just to, and just to verify that the pin stack was good. And it was good. Then the whole process realistically took from mounting the bow on the site to having a complete and finished sight tape. Well, not exactly a sight tape, but like at least a pin stack that's programmed into here took probably 40 or 45 minutes uh, and that really was only because I was kind of being super you know particular about that getting that 60 yard pin nailed down it took me you know four or five ends till I was comfortable with where I was hitting because sometimes sometimes I miss that 60 yards so I like to verify and verify and verify and once I did that everything was great I think if you were in a hurry let's say you got the site and you want to get out in the woods right away you can probably get something workable in 25 minutes 30 minutes uh, at least up to you know 40 or 50 yards but if you want to get, you know, if you want to do it right the first time, give yourself a little more time and, and verify everything. Another interesting new feature on the A1i Pro model is something called XD mode or extra distance. And basically it's a, it's a mode that will allow you to shoot further than you normally would be able to out of the traditional Garmin. Because, you know, because when you've got the setup, you're not moving the sight physically up or down. You've only got the, the distance inside the scope housing uh, to get your pin set up. So for my, my, I'm shooting, you know, 30 inches of draw length. 70 pounds, my air is a little heavy, around 477 grains. Um, so I'm good for, like, for, I think, you know, 20 yards out down to like, I think 87 or 88 yards, I can't recall which exactly. But if you want to shoot farther, let's say you want to practice, you have, the, you have a field you can shoot, and I don't have that ability, but if you have that, you can actually start programming those extra distances in here by um, you lo just use lowering on the actual vertical alignment. So you kind of mark, you mark your original spot and then you kind of go, you can mark how much you've moved it down. So you know, every, you know, every rotation is 12 clicks. You just mark, mark down how many rotations you've gone down. And then you just tell it in, in the system how, many, how much you've moved the site. And it'll realign your pin stack. So you probably won't be able to shoot 20 or 30 yards anymore. But you'll be able to shoot from like 40 out to 100 or 110 or 120. It all depends how light your arrow is or how much draw length you have and how fast your arrow is going. Um, but it's a, it's a neat little system for practicing. You just have to make sure you, you're accurately marking down what those two distances are that you started at and what you finished at. And you can move it down a different amount the next time. The only thing you gotta make sure of is you have enough clearance between the bottom of the site and your, you know, your fletching and your, uh, your arrows. Uh, but once you do that, it at least gives you the ability to go practice those longer distances if you like to shoot at 100 yards or more just for fun now and again. Um, but it's, you know, it's, a, it's a, neat, a neat little feature. I don't think I will use it a lot personally, just because my club is restricted to 76 yards and I'm certainly not going to hunt any farther than that. But it's a, at least as, as an option for those of you who like to practice really long distance shots. Near the beginning of the video, I mentioned there were a couple of new features on this bow that were kind of game changing, or at least for me, like can be super important for bow hunters. And the first of those is something Garmin is calling dynamic level. This is something you don't actually have to have on. You can turn it on or off anytime you like. But if you have it on, it'll let you know that if when you're at full draw, if you're canting the bow to the left or the right, um, it, in all likelihood, you're not going to see anything at 20 or 30 yards where you have a little bit more leeway, obviously, between canting and, and shooting an accurate shot. But if you're shooting at, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 yards, you're going to see those lights come if you're making those slight movements at full draw. Uh, and the, the idea for Garmin is the, the, the warnings are not going to come on 
unless they think you're in danger of missing your shot, of making a bad shot on an animal or a target or whatever at whatever distance you're aiming at. Um, and so what happens is there's, there's two little lights that'll, that'll pop up. And if the top one is blinking, it's telling you that your bow is canting to the left. And if your bottom one's blinking, it'll tell you your bow is canting to the right. And it just allows you to make a correction um, during the shot, just by, all right, I clearly have to move my bow up just a little bit to the right side, and then I can let my shot go. Or, I, or, if, or if you're tired and you, and you worry about letting the shot down, you can just let down and try again. It's a, it's a great little feature that realistically could, could save you from making a bad shot on an animal. And that's the whole purpose for me of having a sight like this. Um, you know, like I, I, I could shoot a three or five pin sight and pin gap and all that. And, you know, especially if I'm only shooting 20, 30 yards uh, on a deer. But, you know, if you want to make sure you're hitting, you have a pin for the exact distance you're shooting, this sight comes in handy. And now there's a little option telling you that if you might, you might be making a bad shot, you might be holding the bow not as level as you could be. And for me, that's a, that is a huge win. My favorite new feature on the Garmin Zero A1i Pro is called Flight Apex. Um, and I think this is huge for anybody who hunts in the woods, who hunts where, you know, where you might be in, in the trees and have some obstacles that you, have, you know, make sure your arrow goes underneath. And with Flight Apex, um, if, you turn, if you choose to turn it on, you don't have to. Um, when you draw back the bow, you'll have your aiming light, and it'll also give you a blinking light above. And that's going to show you where the actual highest point of your arrow is going to be. So if you're at full draw, you can see, oh, if that, if that dot is, there's, if there's a branch somewhere where that dot is, or maybe just a hair below that dot, you probably shouldn't take that shot. Uh, and that ultimately could, again, solve you, stop you from making a bad shot or potentially wounding an animal or anything like that, or just embarrassing yourself amongst your friends when they ask you, why is your arrow stuck in that branch uh, 12 feet up in the tree? Uh, again, I, th I think that is a brilliant piece of technology and you don't have to have this on. You can choose to have it off if you don't want to have that possible distraction of a second light up there. They do have it blinking just because they don't want to have it solid and make you think that's your actual aiming point. It is a different color. My aiming points are in, gr are in green and then the blinking lights, the warning lights are in red. Uh, both for flight apex and for dynamic level, uh, but you know that's it's if you don't want to have that distraction, you can turn it off. But I think if you're if you're someone who hunts in the trees, and where there are potential obstacles in the way, this could be an absolute lifesaver. As you can probably tell, I'm a pretty big fan of this bow sight and all of the cool technology that it provides bow hunters. And all again for me, it's it's technology that could stop you from making a bad shot, and that's the ultimate goal here. But no bow sight is perfect, no product is perfect, and this one's got some issues we can maybe talk about, or at least potential issues. And the first one for me is going to be weight. Um, here, I'll pick it up again. The original uh, Garmin Zero A1i that I've got here uh, weighs in, I think I put it on the scale the other day, just at 14 and 3 quarter ounces. So just about 15 ounces, which is a heavy bow sight by any metric, heavier than any sight I've, I'd ever used prior to that. I've tested, I tested one afterwards that was a little heavier than this one. Um, but ultimately, that's, that adds a bit of a weight to the front of your bow. And with all the new technology in the A1i Pro, the weight has actually gone up a little bit. You know, you, I think you could, you could thank the micro adjustability and things like that. Uh, and maybe the new mounting options, who knows what it is. But this bow came in basically just about 18 ounces exactly. So it's gained a couple of ounces, which is, you know, you're going to notice that. When you're shooting extensively, uh, I found this bow gets, it starts to feel a little bit heavy out front. Now you can counteract that a little bit by taking some weight off your stabilizer. Because um, you know the bow, it helps that because the especially because I've got this thing set up on a Picatinny Picatinny rail, the weight's right out in front of the bow, so it kind of acts like a stabilizer, just a little higher higher mounted than you normally have. But it is a point to consider if if lightweight is your goal, this sight is going to be add extra weight to your bow. Now, of course, you don't have to have a rangefinder with you, which also weighs a lot and probably weighs more than a sight and a rangefinder to, to you know a sight and a rangefinder together would probably weigh more than this sight. But still, it's something to consider if you don't want that weight on your bow. Another potential issue with the Garmin Zero A1i Pro and the A1i and A1 before it is that it's not legal in all 50 states. There are going to be areas where you're not allowed to shoot this. Now, this is not an issue for me or anywhere I've ever hunted. But for those of you, you know, who are considering this site, you should at least look into your local bylaws and make sure that this is something that is legal uh, for you to have. Um, and I think probably the biggest hurdle with this bow site is going to be the price. Um, the this this a1i pro starts at basically thirteen hundred dollars that is that's a big investment that is as much as a high-end like multi-pin site and a high-end um range finder together that's a lot but you have to consider the technology that's inside of it new technology is expensive it definitely costs garmin a lot of money to make these things and to develop all those bits of technology for flight apex and um and dynamic level and all and everything else then everything the rangefinder it's there's there's an insane amount of technology built into the site so it's very expensive and it is clearly not going to be for everybody and i would have to have a very long conversation 
uh, with my wife before I decided to drop $1,300 on a bow sight. Um, however, if you really still want that Garmin technology, the A1 and the A1, uh, the A1i are still going to be available. They're hundreds of dollars less. Um, you know, you often see the A1i Pro on sale for 800 bucks. I think it retails for a thousand, and their regular A1 is going to be, I think, eight hundred dollars. But you could probably find it on sale for less than that as well, especially once this new site really starts flying. Um, so there are other options out there, but there's no doubt it's going to be an expensive site, no matter how you look at it. it but it's up to you whether the technology that's in there is worth it. The bottom line is the Garmin Zero A1i Pro is the most advanced bow sight I have ever seen, touched, laid eyes on, whatever you want to say. It's really, technologically, it's a marvel. Um, and yes, it's expensive. And yes, it's heavy. But when you consider the technology inside, that could potentially save you from making a bad shot at an animal, wounding an animal, ruining a hunt. Things start to get a little bit more palatable. Um, I really do think this is something worth considering if it's in your budget. If it's not, I totally understand it. But if, it's, if, uh, if you're looking for, you know, a tool that could help you make the best shot possible on an animal this is well worth considering thank you so much for watching archery talk please do like share and subscribe it helps the channel an awful lot and we'll see you again soon